Hello and welcome back to part two of the Plasticity to Game Asset uh, tutorial series. A uh, bit, bit, bit more of a longer form of what I've done previously. Um, and this is in part two where we've already made our model in part one. If you haven't uh, seen that one, go back and watch it. See how we made this if you were wanting to follow along. And I'll figure out a way um, to make all of these um, files available as well. Um, so if you just wanted to follow along with the UVing, or if you just wanted to follow along with the, the second part, I'll, I'll make these uh, files available somehow as well. Um, so we've made our shisha pipe in plasticity. We've got three parts to it. We've got the main body. We've got this little attachment here, which I've just want to keep separate for the purposes of baking and we've got the pipe here okay so um, what we're going to do now is we're going to export everything select it all and we're going to save as an obj now i've already done this i've already sort of had a little practice session so we'll start with our we'll start with our high okay and we're not going to mess with too many settings. You can tweak these to your to your heart's desire. But um, what we'll do here is um, I'll just replace that. Now we should get a little uh, takes a couple of moments, and we've got our OBJ. Now we want it set to Ed Gods. We don't want it set to Tries or Quads, and we want the density set to one. So I'm just going to leave it as it is right now. Um, there's these other settings that you can do to get more, you know, curves on your bevels and stuff. And as you can see, we're getting some quite nice circles of quads, but we're getting N-Gons here as well. And N-Gons here as well. Um, and little stuff like this. You know, it's not perfect, but um, we're going to deal to that. So I'm going to press OK for that one. OK, and once this goes back to normal, we will have our model back. And we're just going to do the same thing again, export uh down to OBJ and we're going to do the low poly this time and shisha low exists yep replace it because we've already done that we're going to start from scratch um okay so we've got our engons here we're going to take this down to 0 0.2 give it a little time to think and we're getting a much more basic version i might even do i mean we're we're in 2023 we might do 0 0.25 and see what that does. Not a lot. I think 0 0.2 is fine. Okay, let's export that. Okay. So, in Blender, We've got a new file. I'll get rid of my reference objects. Don't need them for this uh, project. And we'll probably get rid of the grid and stuff uh, while we're UVing. So you can press control and space to come into full screen mode. Um, for now, we'll stay here. But when we get into UVing, we'll probably go into full screen mode. So what you want to do, come to file and import uh wavefront obj okay and i should have the file here and we're just going to import the low poly objects okay so we've got those three there and what we're going to do i've um so we are going to be using all uh free plugins but we are going to use a couple of plugins to make our life easier so the first one is one that i made which is called ngon okay and that um uh does a few things that you usually have to do with a few clicks and you know in this case you can only do it in, in one click so uh first of all we're going to rotate our three objects so we'll start with the base rotate the cord rotate and the wooden attachment rotate so now they're all now if we go back into plasticity um, you will see that um, between Blender and Plasticity, we have the same orientation. Okay, so that's 
what that part of the add-on does. Okay, and then um, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to add our create our low poly. Okay, so we might add all of these to a group and call it low. Okay, and We're going to import our high poly as well. So I've got this set to my quick favorites import wavefront OBJ and Shisha high. Okay. And we'll turn off our low and we'll just quickly one by one, we're going to rotate those as well. And we've got all of those rotated. So now you can see that if we've got our low and our high, you can see this sort of like Z fighting going on here um between the two but if we look at our let's move these into a, a collection press m on the keyboard new collection we'll just call this high okay and so if we turn off our high collection we can see our low poly you can see these uh, depending on your screen you should be able to see these uh monitors this is still quite high poly and it probably will remain so for the duration of the um uh we'll get rid of a lot of it but um anyway that's that's reasonably um high poly but we'll, we'll we'll reduce that but now if we look at our high poly version it's a lot smoother you can see that let's just change our mat cap to one of my custom mat caps so you can see that a little bit better it's a little bit more of a moody now you can i've got a mat caps pack available on gumroad as well if you want to try that out, they're all designed for hard surface. A few different ones like this one um, here. Uh, it just makes uh, viewing my objects uh, a little bit uh, nicer. So I've spent a bit of work on these, and and they're all pretty, they're all pretty fun. Uh, I quite like this one as well. Okay, but we'll go back to uh, this guy, or actually this guy. Okay, so and the reason I like this mat cap for UVing is because um, it allows you to quite easily see uh, the the lines. Um, so we've got our two groups, okay? And what we're going to do is we're going to, one by one, we're going to rename this. The base, I don't like the name base, so I'm going to call this bowl because it's got a a bowl being a pipe okay and we're going to rename that bowl and we're going to go create low poly and what you'll see is this add is adds uh let's turn off our low group it's created a group called bowl low okay and let's turn off our high poly as well okay so it's created a group called bowl low what we've got here is a lower poly version of our original. You can start to see that it's got some funny shading on here with the mat cap. Okay. But not to worry. This is just the low poly to bake the normals to. And if we look at our wireframe, um, you can see that we've triangulated the whole thing. Okay. Um, so that's pretty, pretty good. Okay. If we turn the uh, visibility off, you'll see we're back with our original low poly. Okay, we're going to turn that back on. And we've called that bowl low. Now let's turn our low and high poly group back on. We'll turn bowl low off for now and the backup off. Backup creates a backup of your original mesh, but we'll turn that off. We don't need that. It's just, it's just to keep the workflow non-destructive. Okay, so now that we've done the bowl low, we're going to go to the uh, same object on the high poly and we're going to click rename. And the, you need to do this in order so that when we're renaming these, we're giving the same naming conventions. So when I click create high poly, and don't worry about the error that shows up on screen, it's just a, a, a line of code that shouldn't be there. It still does what it needs to do. Okay. So we've now created a uh, bowl high as well. So we've got bowl low and bowl high. Okay. 
and I didn't explain properly what the modifiers do. So this one adds a triangulate and a data transfer modifier, and the low one creates a um, uh, a triangulate, a decimate set to thirty five percent, and a data transfer modifier. Now the data the, it creates a hidden to the viewports uh, object, which is the original object. Okay, so if we put that on, um, you can see it's hidden in the viewport. We turn that on, it's on. And that is essentially, um, let's turn that off. It's essentially the original. It's another copy of the original. Um, so we are creating copies here. Okay, so we've done that with the, um, we've got our low and our high group. So we've done that with the, Chord, we've done it with a bowl, so we've got now we've got bowl low and bowl high, okay. And these are the naming conventions that are used in both Marmoset and in Substance uh, Painter. So uh, what we're doing is, as part of this process, renaming things to what they need to be. So now let's do it with the chord as well. I'm going to change the chord to be called pipe because that's more uh, accurate, and we'll rename that, create low poly, and then we'll on the pipe and we'll rename that and create high poly okay so we've done that with uh two of the objects wooden attachment i'm just going to call it um attachment okay and we'll rename it and we're in the low poly group create low poly okay and then we're just going to go to the high poly rename it create high poly so you can see we've created a little bit of a mess over here, but really we can turn a majority of this stuff off, okay? It's just creating backups and it's creating places where you know where to find them. But in our low group, we've got attachment low, bowl low, pipe low, okay? And you'll see that they've all got the modifiers um, applied to them, okay? And we've got lower poly versions, okay? And in the high group, we've got the exact same, okay? If it will turn on, we've got the exact same, but it's our high poly, it's our nice smooth version. And if we look at our, um, our brass um, sort of mat cap, you can see that it's showing up with all of these. Actually, let's try a different one. Uh, let's try this one. You can see these nice surface imperfections and things that we made in plasticity are all showing up in our high poly and that's what will show up in our normals. So that is great. The reason that we do it to the high poly as well is that we want to triangulate the high poly um, before we uh, put it into the uh, texturing software. Okay, and then we want to transfer the data so that we've got the same and because the texturing software might triangulate it in a way that is a bit funky and doesn't work that well. So what we're doing is we're just cutting out that that step of like going, oh, crap, I didn't do what I was supposed to do. So now we've got everything. Um, the next step's quite simple, but we need to UV our low polys. So um, let's just go back to this uh, mat cap that I like to use for UVing. Okay. And we might just turn viewport visibility off on this one for now. Okay, and for our um, low poly, I was going to do a full seam based unwrap and use trim sheets and stuff like that, but I just don't think we need to for this asset. It's a background asset. Um, I just don't think that, you know, this is the, this is not a trim sheets tutorial. It'll make it too long, but if you're interested in that, uh, workflow, I might do a tutorial just on, on trim sheets. So next of all, um, there's an asset. I'll plop it on the screen now. Um, if we just go to um, our add-ons, and you'll see here Ngon, uh, Ngon, loop select okay by um and deep 
I think it's on Gumroad for free or a couple of bucks on Blender Market. Uh, we're going to need to use this. So I'll put it on screen. I'll put a link in the description. Uh, if you're going for the free version, do consider donating to Armand Deep because it's people like him that make this workflow possible. Um, look, we've already used my asset, which is the NGON. Um, if you don't want to use my asset, go back and watch this video that I'm going to maybe put up here, uh, if I remember, uh, which explains how to do the whole process manually as well. So, um, yep, that's that for now. Okay, so, um, so yeah, um, N gone is my one, and N gone loop select is, um, I keep Angon edge loop selection, which, uh, so what Angon loop, uh, edge loop selection or Angon loop select does is, um, allows you to select, uh, edges on Angon. So I'll give you an example. If you press, uh, shift uh, alt on a loop, you'll select the whole loop. Okay. But when you come to Angons like this, it starts to have a really funny idea of what the loop is. Okay, so with Angon uh, edge loop selection, okay, it just allows you to double click it and it'll select the loop on Angons. And um, it does have a few little nuances. At first I thought it was buggy, but then I sort of, I, I, I had a look at the code and I sort of understood understood what it was trying to do and i'm not i'm not you know i'm not i didn't fully understand it but if we look at this one let's just turn off viewport visibility okay um then let's choose one of let's go down here somewhere so if i select this and double click it it goes around all right we'll just try and find one that doesn't that one doesn't really um but oh, this occasionally you get one that really plays up like this one here okay so i've selected this one here and i think what it's doing is it's selecting the next edge based on the angle of the vertex um so what i find is if you find a, a try like this okay uh where it's quite small it does a really good job but if you go on these bigger ones like that behaves a bit strangely because it's basing it i don't know if that initial adjacent face or something like that so these ones work really nice these little small areas uh these ones up here and it doesn't always go all the way around sometimes you've got to try a few clicks in a few different places and eventually you'll find one that works so um that one almost worked i think this one no it doesn't always work and when it doesn't work okay when it doesn't work you can then use the uh default blender um shortest distance algorithm which is if you select one edge and then control click it'll just try and get to the next place by the shortest distance okay um and so for the ones that don't work you can go all the way around like that Okay, so we'll go off the cord for now. We'll put the viewport visibility back on for the uh, object. So uh, what I think we're going to do, we'll go into UV editing. Okay. And I'll just get rid of that and get rid of that. Okay. And I think I'm just going to do a smart UV wrap on this one. Okay. Um, okay. And I'm going to just keep the pipe all together as one object. I think that's fine. I'm going to keep the pipe all together as one object and one material. And then I'm going to keep this together, these two together as uh, two objects, but one material. Okay. So We've, un we've smart UV unwrapped that. I'm just going to sit. Um, I've got UV Packmaster 3 installed. You can also use uh, default Blender to pack your UVs. It's not quite as, a, uh, I don't know, 
I don't like it as much, uh, but it is free. So UV pack master costs money. So you can pack islands. Uh, Blender does a pretty good job there. Um, I am going to actually what I'm going to do first is I'm going to merge by distance. We moved that removed 112 vertices and we might as well just do this for uh, these two as well by distance. We used 595 in that case and none in that case. So we've removed double vertices. Um, it doesn't really matter because the add-on actually removes the vertices through the triangulate um, modifier. So we're going to do that, but I'm going to use Heurious, Heuristic Search. Um, and I'm going to Rotation Enable. Um, normalize Islands. And this is important because... It will say automatically scale selected islands before packing. So the average textual density is the same for every island. Um, so that that means what we're going to do is we're going to have a uniform textual density. So let's uh, pack that now. And we'll let it run a few iterations. So it's running on the CPU. And the GPU, it's done uh, several hundred iterations, and it looks to be using up about seventy, well, point yeah, about seven, seventy-two percent of the UV space. What I like to do is just press Escape once and then repack it. Sometimes you get a a little bit more, sometimes not. Okay, and we've got the margin set to zero point zero zero three. Okay, so. There's probably going to be some artifacts in this. It's it's not perfect, but um, like I said, that's um, that's that's one aspect of it. Now, with these two pieces, this piece and this piece, I actually want this piece at the end here. I want the UVs to be um, well. Actually, let's. Smart UV, let's you smart UV project the rest of it. Okay. Hmm. Pack. Okay. But in the case of these, I want these to be unwrapped slightly differently. And I want them to have a little bit more detail because they're going to have some wooden texture on them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select that loop and like I said we wouldn't be able to select this with the normal uh, blender loop select we're using our ngon um, loop select so that's all selected and I'm going to select this one here and mark as seam okay and this looks like to be where the seam is so And then we'll use our shortest path, control click that edge, and we'll mark that seam. And I don't really like that, so I'm going to bring it through to here. And we'll bring it around to here. Actually, let's just... And we'll select this edge here. And select this edge here, shortest path, and mark seam. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to press L while hovering over this section, and then I'm going to select by seam. And then we can do that for the section as well. And I believe this is that selected. Yep. So as you can see, this is all scattered over. Um, if we unwrap this now, we should get a nice unwrap like that. And I'm actually going to straighten this. Oh, I can't straight. No, it's not going to let me because it's not. That's okay. We're going to move these over here. Down. 
and we're going to go and do the same for this one so I click L on that and I'm actually going to press uh, forward slash uh, and then we're going to go shift H to hide everything else and we'll just unwrap that in a similar fashion this one's a bit easier because it doesn't have an interior mark scene you unwrap and there we have it and grab that and put it over there and i think we don't which one is this we don't really need this uh interior we can scale that down a bit okay so back out alt h okay so we've got this and this okay so selecting by seam again what we're going to start to do is we're going to add some vertex colors okay so we'll go back to our cool matte cap from my matte cap um uh so press control and tab and you'll come up with this pie menu go into vertex paint up here you can paint mask you can change it into face mode oh it's only going to let us do it with one object at a time so i like to use strong bold colors so press n to bring up the tool and we've got a color picker here okay just pull this right up to red and just make sure the rgb at value is fully red okay and then you can press shift plus k okay and we should have now if we go down to our and we change our we've got on that cap so it's currently on material if we change it to attribute it'll show us what color um our vertex colors are now we want to do the same with this one okay shift tab vertex paint um and we should go shift k nope we need to make sure it's only these selected when we go into vertex paint mode why is it doing the whole thing Oh, we need to go into face mode. Okay. And shift K. Okay. Back in object mode, we've got our two red wooden bits and they've been unwrapped slightly differently. So let's have a look at those uh, unwraps of both of those. Okay. And we can just, I believe that this should be the outside. And that is the outside. So we want to scale that. To be roughly the same size as that so we get the same textual density and then this other part here uh, we can scale that right down because that's the inside we don't really need that uh, we're not going to be inspecting the wood grain on the inside of that so we'll just scale it down it'll still get the color but it won't be uh, necessarily um, the same now the next part, what we're going to do, I'm going to go and hide our other bits and bobs. So this next part is going to be a little bit tedious, um, but thanks to our friend Deep and his lovely free Engon loop selector, um, we're going to be a breeze. So once again, I'll show you the basics. I'll probably speed this uh, section up because it is just manual labor. But it is very good to do it this way. I'm going to turn viewport visibility off. Just uh, hang on. I'm going to turn viewport visibility off on this so we get a bit of a cleaner look when we're doing it. And I'm going to go out of vertex mode and just we'll go into material mode. So we've got that. And I'm going to hide this as well. And I'm going to hide this as well. Okay so let's just get our viewport looking nice so i've just pressed control plus space to go into full screen 
Um, and what we're going to start doing is we're going to start um, in edge mode selecting these loops. You can hold shift, double click and hold shift. This is with the uh, add-on enabled. And remember, like I said, it's not always going to work, so you've got to find the loop. So um, as I slowly go around here, I find this little one here, and I bet you that one's going to work. And yes, it does. So what you don't want, you want this to be pretty uh, clean. You want them to follow the, uh, the sharp edges. Now we can go mark seam. Now, sometimes... You might want to just go to select um, all by trait, or no, select, select sharp edges, okay? And that might get you most of the way there. In this case, it is, hang on, and what if I do edge loops? No, see, it doesn't, it's not doing it. So if we do that one more time, select... Uh, sharp edges and let's just change our angle yeah we're starting to get more but by the time we get the whole loop for some of them we start to get uh, random uh, bits and bobs there as well so um, actually I just had an idea no that's not going to work either okay sorry bad idea so Yes, this might work in some cases. Um, in this case, we're probably going to need to do it manually. So just to get everything nice, I'm going to um, turn off my axis and my floor, just so I'm kind of like, doesn't really matter which way I'm pointing, and the only thing I'm focusing on is that. We'll get rid of our toolbar, okay, and we'll just crack on, okay, so... Um, I'll likely speed this part up. It's going to be quite tedious for me. For you, it'll be like there'll be some music and uh, you'll get to watch something happen quite quickly. For me, it will probably take about half an hour. Okay, so marking seams. And I'll just do a couple of these before I put it on high speed mode, just so you get the gist. So see, I clicked that one and it decided to choose that loop. I click this one here and it shows me a nice loop. So it's kind of understanding how this uh, add-on works. Okay. Um, then you, you, you'll, you'll get the hang of it eventually. All right. Now enjoy some... Uh, Enjoy some relaxing music and watch this, or you can skip to the next chapter uh, where we go into a little bit more detail about the UV. UV away. Don't forget to mark your seams as you go along.
Ah, finally done all of that. Um, so as you can see, that was relatively tedious. Oh, I missed one. Okay. Let's see if this one's going to be easy for us or not. As you can see, that was relatively tedious. Um, however, um, there's several reasons why you might want to do this. Now, there are bit, there are probably uh, better, uh, less free ways to do this. Uh, well, in fact, I know there are, especially in ZBrush. Um, we could have done this quite easily. We could have just created one ball to begin with and then had it repeating. Um, and then, uh, you know, uh, there, there, there's other ways to do this. But the reason I do this, this is the free way and it's good practice. Um, now, here's the test where we're going to test if that, because we've got everything uh, to be selected by seam when we press L. Oh, oh, not anymore. Okay, so seam. So we're just going to select all of our baubles and make sure that the gaps are left empty. And I'll speed this up as well. Oh, that one is not. Okay, where is our. Okay, so I will speed this up. And if I find any breaks in my. Um, in my islands, I will fix them. But what we're essentially going to do is add vertex colors to all of our um to all of our islands so that we can separate out our materials in substance um painter and it looks like oh there goes one so we'll make a vertex group so we can and we can assign that okay and that's just so that we can get back to it if we need to. So this one was broken somewhere. There we go. So I'll speed this bit up as well. And I'll be back with you in a moment. Look at that little bastard. Okay, so we've got everything except that one there. Um, I'm just going to do that last. So we're just going to, um, first of all, we'll go back into our vertex colors attribute mode so we can see what colors we're going to press alt and tab, go into vertex paint. And I think we'll just, uh, we'll make these ones, we'll get our tool tab up and we'll just make these ones, um, RGB will go fully green. And we'll just press Alt-K. And we'll just go back into object mode. Okay, and we'll get this last one here, uh, which I missed. Um, so as you can see, I've been using this uh, NGON add-on when it works. And when it doesn't work, I've been doing the slightly longer way of... Um, I've been doing the slightly longer way pressing control plus click to get the shortest path. So this is a, quite a tedious uh, process. There's other ways to go about this. Now there's a couple of reasons why I've done that. Um, I can now, 
I can now use that to do this. Now, it might seem like a little detail, but for example, if I was to animate this um, like inside of a game engine or something like that, um, those little metal bits will really glint the light and things like that, and it'll just make the asset just that much cooler. Now, there's like a hundred ways to skin a cat, um, and we just go back into layout mode. Okay, and we'll unhide the rest. So if we go into our attribute mode, we can see that we've given those uh, vertex colors. Okay, so now we've got um, our low poly and our high poly. And I'm just going to rename uh, these two folders. I'm going to call this uh, Shisha Low and I'll call this Shisha shisha high now because we've got all of our other ones so what you'll see if we get this low poly open and then we like open up bowl low okay if we um if we uh what well, we've got bowl high on so we go open up bowl low and if we uh hide in viewport it's the same one from in there and then if we just turn our viewport visibility on for our original um the data object so it's not making like multiple multiple copies with the engon add-on it's it's just putting them in different places so that you you've got a reference but the two uh main ones that we need to worry about now are uh shisha high and we've got our naming conventions all correct and shisha low so that's great so that means that when we uh get into our texturing phase um we are going to um have um all of these named correctly so the software will recognize uh it as it needs to so um in terms of unwrapping we've got these seams now so let's just close our high let's uh just get our pipe here okay let's go back into uv editing mode and let's uh see how that goes so we've got our bits over here oh we wanted to keep the attachment in there as well so let's just um add that okay so we want that to be part of it as well okay so we got both of those over there so we want those we want those ones to be reasonably big so let's unwrap everything except for those two okay so we'll just select those two um and we will invert the selection control i okay and we're just gonna go u smart uv project okay and i think that's done it and then let's do our rotation step i think like something like 35 so that some of these uh thingos can sit uh more snugly together and we've got normalized islands let's hack this okay and see how it goes it's probably going to do a few iterations as you can see they're kind of all rotating in hopefully there's nothing overlapping we'll give it a i don't know 30 iterations on the gpu And actually what we want to do now is we want to i mean if you're just using blender internal we'll move all of that up there we'll invert our selection again and we're gonna pack these okay that's fine we'll scale them right down to about there 
because I want these to be a little bit detailed. Um, the wooden nozzles. How closely are they packed? They're a little bit close. So I want to... G. I just don't want any overlapping uh, artifacts with our ambient occlusion in regards to this because I think it, it's got the potential to do it. Okay, and then let's invert our selection again. And then this time we're going to select everything and G off this. And then we're just going to go pack to others. Okay. And it might take a little while with these just deselected. So I would imagine that it's going to take a little while indeed. And there you go. Bang. And what's it saying? And this is using UV Packmaster 3. So we'll just give it a little bit of extra time. And well, I'll press escape now. Okay, let's go back to uh, let's get our body back in there. And yeah, starting to look okay. Now look at let's look at our UVs for that. You know what? I think that's fine, but let's just pack that again with the 45 and see if it does anything better oh, it seems to be making with the 35 let's enable flipping and see what happens much of a muchness I think that's nicely packed anyway. So we've got everything packed up. These are all part of the same UV. Now, because these are separate objects, I've got a feeling we might get a bit of an art of artifacting there. But let's go back to our layout mode, and this is where we export it into Marmoset. Okay. And that will be um, so what we do. Next, we get our Shisha High open. Okay, and we select every object in the low and the high. And we export this as an FBX. Okay, all together, the low and the high. And we're going to call this Shisha um, High Low Bake. I can't think of anything... Uh, better right now and we're going to go selected objects only and then we're going to make sure that we are applying the modifiers okay and we're going to go export fbx okay and that will take a moment okay so now that that's done we'll go into marmoset And what we're going to do is we're going to go right up over here to this baker. Okay. Bake project one. Make sure that that's selected. And then we're going to go down to this little um, quick loader. And we're going to go load. And... Where did I put it? One moment. Okay, it's in Blender UVs, Shisha, High Low Bake. Okay, 
So we'll open this one up. And what you'll see, all of our um, items, our highs and our lows, because we uh, named them in Blender um, with these uh, suffixes by using this add-on. I mean, you can do it manually, but the add-on does it for you. Because we named them with these suffixes, what, what has then happened is that we've um, got all of our... Um, highs and lows, so what it's, it's already disabled the high poly for us in each one, and each one is uh, treated as a separate object. Okay, now I did make a little error in Blender, so we're going to go back, and we're just going to give materials, because I want them to be separate materials. So we're going to go to material one for the pipe, and we're going to call this new pipe okay and we're going to give the attachment the pipe material as well because it was on the same is that it should update this for us so if i click on that uh if we go to our materials yep there we go bowl and pipe okay so for baking materials what we want to do what we do in marmoset get our bake object okay we make sure that multiple texture sets is uh, selected because we have chosen two different materials and under bake projects we go to under bake we go to quick loader and we go load our shisha high low bake we're going to open that one up okay and we'll just leave it as default for now let's make we'll call it uh, 2k for the pipe We'll call it uh, 4096. We'll keep the normals quite high res. Okay. And then we will go to preview. Okay. We're going to delete these two. Delete these two. And we'll just say, we'll call this, um, we'll call it bake shisha. Don't get. Okay. Now. Fingers crossed, this should just work. What happens if we turn our normal map off on bowl? Yes, we've got that. And on our pipe, on pipe. So there you go. So our plasticity mesh that we had, it's not, you can still see uh, some jaggy edges, but this is a game asset, remember? This will be like a background asset, but we're getting our nice smooth highlights as opposed to these wonky highlights we're getting these beautiful smooth highlights um, and now let's go back to our baker and let's tick uh, object normals curvature and amb ambient occlusion and just click preview and we might get some errors here which we will need to fix actually it came out all right Wow, I'm pretty impressed with that. Okay, now we're going to paint this in substance, but if you really wanted to do a quick uh, render in Marmoset, that's not too hard to do at all. I'm actually really impressed with our little bake here. I thought we were going to have to do some edits, but even over here, not really much artifacting at all, apart from what's, you know, caused by our geometry. Um, so that's really good. All right, so this is going to be our, um, uh, our normals and whatnot for substance. But if just a quick one for Marmoset, if you wanted to do a quick render for like, you know, ArtStation or, or Instagram or something like that. Um, I've already got metal selected. So what we're going to do here is we're going to click um, new texture project. I can't really remember how to do this. Click bowl and we can go over here and I think link the currently selected material in the material editor to this texture project. So this is the material editor. So we'll go like that. 
and it's brought in our normal and our AO by the looks of things. I think we're going to have to bring in our curvature. So bowl curvature open and object normal bowl uh, normal objects. Okay, so we've got those there. We're not using material IDs here. So let's just drag on the bronze worn. And there you go. Now, if we tick this normal, we should get our old mesh back. Yeah, there we go. So we've got this uh, going on here. We can start to play with the contrasts, uh, rotation. You get it's you get the picture. And and then I think once you've got your texture project, if we go into layers here, um, and we can go into smart masks. Um, I can't really remember. Um, I'll clear the filters. If I got anything downloaded. So if I go dirt fine and I think if I drag it on there and or I haven't used Marmoset much as a uh, anyway, you get the picture. Um, maybe if we type in, go to library and type in fabric, 216 different fabrics, um, cotton scuffed, we can download that. Actually, that's taking too long to download, but we can... Uh, oh, no, we're going to have to link another texture project. So we make another texture project. And then we link uh, pipe to that one. And then we can drag the canvas onto there. Which didn't do anything. Oh, no, there we go. So... Look, we got the pipe, but we're going to do all of this in um, substance, but starting to look cool already. And, you know, uh, go into our render settings, start adding some lighting. There we have it, our shisha pipe. It's starting to look pretty cool. So the next step will be going into Substance Painter and we will be painting this model and adding all of the nooks and crannies, not just whacking on a smart material, but we'll, we'll actually texture this properly. Um, but I'm really starting to like the way that this is looking. See you in the next episode.